In this video, we're gonna talk about how to keep the workplace clean and safe. Keeping a project clean is literally the hardest thing you'll ever do. Only masters can do it, and I'm about to show you how. Would you like to see what cleanliness can do for you and have the tips and tricks to get it done on your project, like real, real suggestions, not fluffy concept stuff? If that's what you want, you come to the right place. Let's do this. All right, so let me do a little bit of preaching because this is my jam, this is my jam. Cleanliness enables all other lean tenants. Respect for people, cleanliness is key for that. Stability, cleanliness is key for that. One piece flow, the ability to do something one thing at a time, cleanliness is the first step in that process. Flowing together, cleanliness again, absolutely key. Total participation with visual systems. How are you gonna see anything in a visual system if it's dirty? Cleanliness is key for that as well. And then continuous improvement. You'll never continuously improve something if you can't see what you need to improve and if you don't have an environment that's ready and able to do it. So cleanliness is the key to all of this. I need you to know that. There's no such thing as implementing lean or a lean system or a lean project without cleanliness. And thankfully for us, Cleanliness is the hardest thing you'll ever do. You're welcome. So I wanna tell you what I mean by cleanliness. So I'm talking about really beautifully clean floors. I'm talking about the site being clean. I'm talking about, yes, even the plaster contractors and the masons and anybody doing styrofoam for the eaves or for their plaster, right? Having really clean exteriors. I'm talking about the entryway being clean, the bathrooms being clean, the roadways, the SWIP, everything being clean. I determine for myself if a project is clean enough by this measurement. Can I, when I'm walking the project as a superintendent, pick up any trash I find with my left hand? If it's more than what I can pick up with my left hand, then it's not clean enough for me. And if there is an area like that, I will consolidate a pile and take a picture for the trade partner and say, hey, we're gonna need that picked up right away. So my approach to this is that if an area is not clean, a crew is not clean, a general uh, scope or zone is not clean, it needs to be stopped, meaning the work gets to stop, the crew gets to stop, and they get to clean it up right then and there. Now, somebody said one time, Jason, are you saying, you know, if I'm up on the top of a ladder and something falls, I need to come down the ladder, pick it up, put it in the trash can? No, that's not what I'm saying. Go up and do your work. Maybe you have a little bit of a mess underneath you and then clean it up when you get down. But really, we're looking for more creative options. Like, could you have a better ladder? Could you have a trash receptacle up with you? Could you be in a lift and have that trash can with you? At your cut station, can you have a gondola with you, right? Let's prevent the need to pick it up in the first place. So the guideline of nothing hits the floor is actually pretty cool. So that's what I expect. I expect beautiful signage, beautiful roadways, beautiful SWIP, beautiful sites and entry, beautiful hoist, around the dumpster, super clean, right? All of your staging clean, inside and outside, everything in the building nice and clean. I should only have to use my left hand when picking up trash. That means that that project is clean enough. So let's first start with how do we keep a project clean at the project level? Let me give them to you one by one. If you ever need additional help, please just comment on this video and ask, and I'll send you any template, any help that I can give you, podcast, whatever reference materials I can to help you along your journey. So let's go. Number one, write perfect cleanliness into the trade partner's contracts. Make sure that everybody knows that the crew will maintain a clean environment specifically in their zones as a part of the TAC production system, but that they will clean, and if not, they will be asked to stop and clean all of them, the entire crew, immediately, right then and there on the spot. Now, if you're dealing with unions, you might not be able to do that. You might only be able to ask the laborers to clean. However, we do need to address this issue and make sure that the cleaning is pacing with the installers. Write it into the trade partner's contract, what you expect and how it will be done. Number two, organize your site so that it can be clean, meaning you you should have the crane, the hoist, and the forklift so that they can get from your scrap out units or your scrap out areas or through your points of access any trash or uh, pallets or excess materials out of the building effectively. You will want trash cans at the right locations, you will want trash chutes, you will want access and hoisting available, 
and you will definitely want the normal and the recycled dumpsters available at all times. So make it easy for the project site to keep the site clean. Next, stress cleanliness from day one from the worker orientation. As soon as somebody hits that project, they automatically know what to expect. Number four, build remarkable bathrooms or if you have to use honey buckets, meaning the porta potties, make sure they're cleaned often enough with hand wash stations so that you set the example. However you treat the workers with the bathrooms is typically how they'll treat you. Number five, explain to your hoist operator, your forklift operator, and your crane operator that all of their respective areas must be perfectly clean before they do any hoisting operations. That means around the hoist, that means around the dumpsters, that means all the staging areas, that means anything that the crane interacts with. Your operators, your deputy sheriffs might say, well, Jason, they're asking me to go do this work, but it's not clean. I say, stop. Do not allow anything to move until it's clean. And then they'll say, hey, what if people want to get up the hoist and they're bugging me? Well, ask them to help you clean it up because <laughs> that hoist is not moving until it's clean. Create really clean entry and access and hoisting points for the project and set the example there. And most of the time, workers and foremen will follow in their areas. Six, teach constantly about cleanliness and organization in the worker huddles every day. Seven, start a WhatsApp chat with your foreman for your trade partners and for your internal foreman for your carpenters and laborers that do work for your general logistics and take pictures of areas that need attention throughout the day, anywhere from five to 15 items and always stay ahead of the chaos by making corrections daily. Number eight, set the example and you as the superintendent and PM, yes, I said it, pick up trash yourself and model the behavior you're asking for. Also keep your desk, your truck and your office really clean to set an example. Live what you preach. Nine, have GC or general contractor laborers or carpenters that can help maintain the site, the public areas that one or two trades do not own. It's basically a general area and keep those areas tidy, clean and maintain and that will set the expectation for your trades. 10, and you might not like this, but I'm telling you it works. Implement zero tolerance with this and ask crews to stop and shut down and clean when you see a mess. It's not that hard. And create the habit of before or after lunch and at the end of the day cleaning up and having more detailed tidies or cleanups at the end of the week. I highly recommend that you never, ever, 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 ever ever implement a composite cleanup crew. That is just a waste of time. It's masking waste. It's masking bad behavior. It's masking a fundamental problem with the crews. Instead, have crews clean up their own work, develop that relationship, manage it that way, and then grade the trade partners with your contractor grading system. Never use a composite cleanup crew. It doesn't work, it only masks waste. And like I said, number 11, put cleanliness on your grading system and grade each of your trade partners based on their cleanliness. Share that with everybody on the project site, especially the owners of the trade partners companies and everybody will elevate from there. And if you implement this, you're on your way to having a remarkably clean project site. And for those of you who love composite cleanup crews, I know you're dying to interact. Put it in the comments, we'll have a discussion about it. I love the topic, we can have an open conversation about it. So please comment if you have anything that you wanna discuss. And finally, I wanna say that for the foreman in your crew, always remember these key steps to keep a clean crew. Number one, start the day with 5S. Just 5S your area, even if you take five minutes, it will make an impact on the daily. Number two, Encourage your workers to memorize the eight wastes and to look for waste and to make improvements daily. Number three, set your areas up ahead of the work with the right tools, equipment, and supplies the day before so that workers can come to work and be very effective in the morning. Number four, enforce cleanliness as your top priority. If you as a foreman don't teach anybody anything else, it will shape a mindset where they can learn for themselves. Number five, reward your crew members for their clean environments and their best efforts. And really the most important thing is for you, whether it's you as the superintendent or you as the foreman to set the example and have a clean mind and a clean life and a clean approach because at the end of the day a good super is a clean super a good foreman is a clean foreman a good worker is a clean worker everything every bit of success starts with cleanliness and you cannot run a lean site without it in fact general contractors this is not a suggestion it is your duty Trade partners are expecting you to run a clean job so that they can do their best work. This is not an option, it's a requirement. The job should look just as good as a manufacturing facility, and I promise you, it can be done 
people do it all the time. And to really support you in this, I'm going to give you a link to a blog post about 5Sing and using the eight ways and really creating clean and operationally stable environments. I really, really, really hope that you're able to put this into practice because if you can control cleanliness, you can control everything. It's the basis for all success. On we go.